as a 14-year-old girl, I too feared the knock on the door. Because I was a part of the Russian Seventh-day Adventist underground book printing called The Summer's Dot. Today, as I stand here in this little Russian village, I think back on those days when publishing Christian books was forbidden. I think of my brave church members who went to prison and some of whom died in prison because they were caught printing and distributing Christian books. Up until 1989, the communists considered the unauthorized printing of books of any kind as undermining the state. This was especially true of religious books printed by the Adventist underground printers. Living under this printing ban left the Russian church members with the challenge of how do we provide much needed spiritual material? Well, they answered the call by making homemade books. This was done by translating imported devotional books, spirit of prophecy books, and others that had been smuggled into the country. The process of making a homemade book began as 10 sheets of very, very thin paper and nine sheets of carbon paper squeezed into one of these manual typewriters. Often the typist would place something soft like a pillow under the typewriter to muffle the loud clacking sound. Sometimes the typing was done in closets hidden away from the nosy neighbors and the watchful eyes of the KGB. Can you imagine what it must have been like to type through all those layers of paper and carbon? Once the typists had finished their part, other volunteers would put the books together using their primitive handmade bindery tools. Often as they hand trimmed and stitched the books, you could hear the sound of singing. This is an example of their work. You'll notice that the pages are very thin and they only have typing on just one side. It was common practice to slip a piece of paper behind the page for easier reading. And so tens of thousands of books were made by the brave members of the church in Russia. However, printing the books was only the first of many dangerous parts of this work for God. There are many stories of how the Seventh-day Adventist underground printers smuggled their books into the hands of their spiritually starved brethren. Some put the books in market baskets and covered them with onions. Others carried their truth-filled books in suitcases and prayed for the angels to protect them as they traveled. And that brings us to the story that some call the angel pinched baby. It all started when a neighbor tipped off the police. Shortly after that, an Adventist family was picked up and taken to the police station for questioning. So there they stand in an interrogation room waiting for the investigating officer to come in. And as they waited, the baby began to get restless and start to cry. Then the baby began to scream, as only an unhappy baby can. Louder and louder the baby screamed. In spite of every effort from the parents, the baby continued to wail and upset everyone in the police station. Finally, a superior officer burst into the room and shouted, Get those people and that baby out of here! The Adventist underground printers did exactly what they were told to do. They left. Oh, uh, by the way, did I mention that the baby stopped screaming as soon as they were outside and safe? Now, we don't know for sure, but you decide for yourself whether that baby was perhaps pinched by an angel. But not everyone was so successful. Take, for instance, the case of Alexander, whose story is translated by Shvedlava. We just uh, left our home, and I looked into the mirror in my car, and I saw a car behind us. They told me nothing about uh, driving too fast. They just approached my car, and began to look for books, and of course they found books. They already had a document, permission to search everything in my house. And they found those books we printed, typewriters, and they took me from my home for five years. It was back in 1981 when they arrested this 44-year-old father of two for distributing Christian books. At the time, Alexander's baby was so young it was still unnamed. It would be years before he would be released from prison. This is a KGB photo taken at his trial. Think of it. This man spent years away from his family, locked up in prison, just for making Christian books. In addition, there are the stories of Paul Mikatuk. He spent six years in prison for printing Christian books. And Peter Kozu, 
a carpenter who spent three years for being a conscientious objector and then four more years for helping produce and distribute Christian books. Then there's the story of Pastor Stanislav Kravitz. He spent six years in prison for doing missionary work. Pastor Kravitz refers to prison as a school in which they were able to teach others the joy of being a Christian. He told the judge at his sentencing, you may imprison the man, but I am free in Jesus Christ. And while in prison, Pastor Kravitz saw an angel who spoke to him and said, don't be afraid, the end will be good for you. Well, the day Pastor Kravitz continues his prison ministry, but he does so as a free man, offering the freedom of that gospel for his fellow man. These are just a very few of the stories of these brave and dedicated people. Thankfully, today, the citizens of Russia are now free to read and distribute as much Christian literature as they wish. This then brings us back to Svetlana as she tells you about publishing in Russia today. Today, everything has changed. I am a Seventh-day Adventist pastor's wife who works as an on-air television interviewer. Besides me is a brand new high-speed printing press, which is able to produce 10,000 times 10,000 as many books as we did with typewriters and hand tools. God has been good to us here in Russia, especially through our friends and prayer partners around the world who helped us to buy our new printing press. On behalf of my Adventist countrymen who lived and died to proclaim free angels' message here in Russia, I thank you. And as we say it in Russian, спасибо. May God bless you, everyone. Well, the challenge continues. The new high-speed press has now teamed up with a very slow and outdated sheet-fed printing press. You might say it's kind of like the, the tortoise and the hare. In order to operate the publishing house at full capacity, a newer, faster four-color press is needed by faith. We trust in God's abundance and believe that again, His people will meet the challenge for the gospel in Russia. We are now launching out by faith to raise $385,000 to buy a newer sheet-fed press for publishing in Russia. Won't you join us? Won't you line up behind the Russian pioneers who by faith put their lives in harm's way? They went to prison, they even suffered for the sake of printing in Russia. It was one of the Samzadot printers who stated, we did our best for God and we feel no regret. May that be the testimony of all of us today. Thank you. 